Welcome to The Nail, I'm Ashley. It was only a matter of time, but crafty players are already hacking their SNES classics, not only adding new games, but also new features for the mini console. One of the big tools that players are using is called HackChi, which allows them to connect the console to the PC and add unofficially supported games, plus box art to make it look kind of clean and consistent. Because of the system's memory, players are actually able to add hundreds of games thanks to these tools. Uh, not exactly illegal, it's a, it's a pretty dark gray area, but people are doing it. In addition to that, however, they're also hacking in reset button shortcuts on the controller, addressing one of the more troublesome oversights of the SNES Classic, since you normally have to get off your ass, walk across the room to do it, which, come on, what is this, the 80s? Uh, it should be noted that none of this is legal, again, and you also run the risk of breaking your favorite hard to get console, but look, the options out there if you wanna live dangerously. Now, uh, with all the increasing conversations surrounding loot boxes in this fall's biggest releases and a lot of people being very unhappy about them, it looks like one upcoming title is going to just steer right clear of that whole controversy and they want to be very upfront about it, and that's Assassin's Creed Origins. Several outlets have detailed the next Assassin's Creed's loot boxes, which Ubisoft wants you to know cannot be bought with real money. A Eurogamer spoke with game director Ashraf Ismail, who said these chests are from a vendor named Hida. Ismail explained, you can find this stuff in the world, but the idea is if you have the money, you can just buy stuff for him. Hida also sells a mystery box which can contain any weapon, piece of gear, or item in the game. It's a way for people who hoard lots of money, if you min-max the economy system, to gamble the money and get really unique stuff. So if you don't do all the crazy big infiltration missions and find loot, you can buy it with in-game currency and in-game currency only. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins releases on October 27th. Oh God, that's the same day Super Mario Odyssey and Stranger Things season two. So that's gonna be a big day for everyone. If you've been on the fence about checking out Ninja Theory's Hellblade, uh, Senua's Sacrifice, today might be a good day to finally take the plunge. It's a great game, it's super weird. Make sure you wear headphones. The company announced that they'll be donating proceeds from all sales today to the Rethink Mental Illness organization in honor of Mental Health Day. In addition, they've also released a new trailer for the game made up entirely of photos submitted by players straight out of the photo mode, which is really cool. It's also filled with quotes from users about their experiences with Hellblade rather than press quotes. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. If you've been thinking about seeing more of this game for yourself, it's a really unique experience, I can't say enough about it. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds may have set a staggering Steam record of nearly 2 million concurrence over the weekend. It was not like a couple weeks ago that it broke 1 million and that was a huge deal. But another interesting headline from this week is how many players are visiting its rival. Epic published some of Fortnite Battle Royale stats on Twitter yesterday, revealing 525,000 concurrent users and 3.7 million daily active users in their free-to-play Battle Royale counterpart. While that's obviously nowhere close to nipping at the heels of PUBG's staggering numbers, it would be enough to easily put it in the top handful of most played games on Steam. However, should be noted, those numbers are accounting for Xbox, PC, and PS4, whereas Battlegrounds numbers are PC only for now. Still, fairly impressive to see just how far it's come in such a short amount of time. It seemed like there was a lot of concern that Fortnite was running out of steam. They released this, bam, half a million concurrence. That's a lot. Those guardians out there waiting for more to do in Destiny 2 are going to have to wait just a little bit longer. Not a much longer, but a little bit. According to Bungie, the prestige mode of the game's Leviathan Raid, basically the hard mode for those of you who don't really follow the terminology, is going to be delayed until next week. The developer wrote in a blog post, an exploit has been discovered in the Leviathan Raid that causes the encounters to be stripped of their intended challenge. To allow time to fix this issue, we are delaying the start of the prestige raid until next week. It's important to us that the team who earns world first status doesn't have their legacy tarnished by doubt, skepticism, or uncertainty. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty good point. I mean, no one wants an asterisk on their world record. Fortunately for Destiny 2 players, the rest of this week's content did go live on schedule, so now I have access to the Iron Banner PvP event, and then you'll get your prestige stuff next week. Is Blizzard working on another Overwatch game of some kind? Maybe. 
Uh, well, it could be the case, at least based on some new job postings that have gone up on the company's website. Blizzard listed openings for art internships for their incubation group, which works on potential projects that may or may not end up seeing the light of day. Uh, just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall, see what sticks. The interesting thing about these positions, though, is that they require a familiarity with Overwatch for the creation of in-game assets, or at least they did before Blizzard edited that part of the job listing out once people started passing the information around. So could be that Blizzard is starting to test the waters for some other content in the Overwatch universe or an eventual Overwatch sequel or some crazy new Overwatch content. Who knows? Either way, it's probably going to be a long time before we hear anything or never if it goes away of Project Titan or StarCraft Ghost. Or in the case of those ones, we'll hear a bunch about it and then we'll have to grieve. What went wrong with the Assassin's Creed movie last year? Big ol' question. It seemed like, you know, you get Fassbender on board, and you get big studios behind it, you put a budget in there, and this could be finally be the chosen one. Well, it wasn't. Uh, and now the star and producer, Michael Fassbender, uh, is talking about it. He says he thinks it's possible the movie just wasn't entertaining enough and took itself too seriously. Both of which I honestly have to agree with. In fairness though, it's hard to see how you make a lighthearted movie about assassins unless, I don't know, you're, well, oh yeah, Deadpool. Anyway, in an interview with Movie and Co. UK, Fassbender talked about a theoretical sequel and said, I would make it more entertaining. That's really the main note, the feeling of the first film. I think it took itself too seriously and I would get to the action a lot quicker. Now there was previously talk of two more movies, but that was before Assassin's Creed didn't do so well at the box office. So we'll have to see if those ever end up materializing. Looks like the cast members of Fast and the Furious are a little bit more on the furious side these days. Uh, there are apparently some hurt man feelings after a spin-off movie was announced that's gonna focus on Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Jason Statham. Uh, it's due out in 2019 and some of the other cast members aren't too pleased at being left out. Tyrese Gibson took a shot at The Rock on Instagram, sarcastically congratulating him for making the Fast and the Furious franchise about you. Soon after that, Vin Diesel posted a picture on Instagram showing him, Gibson, and Paul Walker, which he captioned Brotherhood, but oh, conspicuously left Statham and The Rock out. Sour grapes, look, we, we know they've got a whole feud going on. No idea who is doing what, honestly, but Hey, it's good publicity. At any rate, the spin-off is set to come out in 2019 and the next proper Fast and the Furious movie is scheduled for 2020. Hopefully all these hurt feelings will be mended by then. Probably a bunch of cash to do the trick. Either way, I don't know, we'll go see the movie anyway. <laughs> Uh, we've been hearing rumors about a third Bill and Ted movie for years now. Everyone just wants to see it come back. And Keanu Reeves actually shed some light on the project recently at New York Comic Con. Reeves said that the movie, while not in production, does have a title, Bill and Ted Face the Music. There's also a finished script and Reeves gave us a little taste of the plot saying it's a cautionary tale. They're supposed to save the world, but then we see them, they haven't saved the world and they're married and have kids and they're playing to nobody, but they have to write this song and face the music. Hopefully we'll make it before I'm 60. We hope so too, Keanu, but honestly, given how slow Keanu is ages, even if he is 60 by the time they make it, he'll still probably be able to pass for a 20 something. It's just not fair. The internet is buzzing about the newest trailer for The Last Jedi, which gave us a lot of plot points, but more importantly, porgs. In it, we see new Adat walkers attacking Resistance Base, Rey's being trained by a very grumpy Luke Skywalker who thinks she might be super dangerous. Meanwhile, Kylo Ren is also struggling over how much black he can possibly wear at once. We finally get to see Supreme Leader Snoke in the flesh instead of a hologram. There's a bunch of cool fights, and there's Finn, and there's Captain Phasma, and there's the Millennium Falcon that's getting chased through like a cool crystal cave because of course it is. And then there's a big scene at the end that shows that Rey has a lot of questions she needs answered. We don't want to go into too much because a lot of people are avoiding seeing this trailer. Uh, director Ryan Johnson warned that it might be a little bit spoilery for some people, but if you don't care about the spoilers, it's a really cool trailer and you don't have to wait long for the movie because it hits December 15th and tickets went on sale last night. Hope you got yours. If you did, let us know in the comments. Now this next story, gonna make you feel old. The Orange Box, that legendary collection of Valve games was released 
10 years ago this week. Now, if you are very young and didn't live through all that, the Orange Box was what a lot of people consider to be the greatest collection of games ever, launching Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Team Fortress 2, and a little game called Portal. Each game was really significant. Half-Life 2 Episode 2 was the last time we got a new Half-Life game or bit of game. Uh, Team Fortress 2 became a multiplayer sensation. Portal was a surprise hit that became a very well-regarded franchise of its own. Of course, the orange box also included Half-Life 2 and its first expansion, Episode 1. In an interview with PC Gamer, Valve's Robin Walker said that retailers were surprised at how many good games were all in one bundle. He said, Retail had never seen a new high quality box containing more than one title. Historically, a box that contained multiple titles was a bundle of old or low quality titles. So yeah, that was a pretty legendary lineup. Happy 10 years, Orange Box, and please make more games, Val. And I don't mean, I don't mean artifacts, I mean other games. You know what I mean. All right, that's the news we have for this roundup. Let us know what you think of all the stories in the comments down below to make sure you get all the news from every corner of the internet every day. Like this video. If you're new to this channel, subscribe, please. Uh, they also spoke with game developer Ashra. Oh. Uh, soon after that, Vin Diesel posted a picture on Instagram showing him, Gibson, and Paul Walker, which he captured Brotherhood, but conspicuously left out Satham and the Rock. Ouch. Uh, sour grapes? What did I do? Uh, captured. 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 Oh.